Hello, let's have a look at what the differences between paging and segmentation. Definitely one of the more tricky concepts within this OS topic. And it all falls within memory management, one of the key tasks an OS performs, because the OS has to manage the primary storage. We know that all programs and all data, which I'm going to call files for this video, must be held in primary storage to be used by the CPU. And so it's really important the OS manages this process to ensure everything the CPU needs is in primary storage. And when we say primary storage, really we're talking about RAM. Most of this video relates to RAM. I know the difference in terms between memory and storage is really annoying, but memory management typically refers to managing RAM. Sadly, ROM gets a little bit forgotten about because it's not nearly as complex as RAM. Now, paging and segmentation are just two parts of memory management. Let me just talk to you about some general things because you could be asked in an exam, generally speaking, how does the OS manage memory? And there are loads of things you can talk about. Paging and segmentation are just two of those big things. So the OS needs to, first of all, copy these programs and files from secondary storage where they're based when they are needed. So if I double click a program to start running it, the OS needs to copy it from secondary storage into RAM. It will need to before it actually adds it into RAM, find some space for these. It will need to, as things progress, keep track of where different things are held in primary storage. You might have a huge number of things open, it needs to know where they are. And paging and segmentation are two techniques for really addressing these two bullet points. So we'll come back to this later. We also will finish with programs, we'll finish with files. If I've got PowerPoint open, I've currently got this PowerPoint open. If I close it, that needs to get deleted from RAM. We also have to, as an OS, manage or, uh, and mitigate against potential issues. For example, one program could try and access another program's data, which could be quite a severe security risk. A virus could be quite keen to see what your emails are saying. We want to try and keep them partitioned and separate in memory. And there are particular situations which can also cause errors, like when we don't have enough capacity. And that relates most to virtual memory which we'll leave for the next video. So if your operating system has a lot of work to do when it comes to memory, we're going to focus on the organization side of things in this video because that's what paging and segmentation relates to. Now we need to split up our primary storage, i.e. RAM, into individual divisions. We need to have smaller subsections, those are what divisions are, so that I can hold multiple things in RAM. If I didn't decide to split it up, I can only ever hold one program or one file. And that's just not very useful. And an important but uh, admittedly confusing distinction is between the physical memory and the logical memory. So when we talk about physical memory, we talk about how the data is actually held in the physical stick of RAM, where data is actually located inside it. RAM is broken into divisions already because RAM consists of potentially billions of individual memory cells. A memory cell has its own unique address and it's maybe a byte big. So it's already got divisions just naturally. However, the OS can play around with this with the logical memory. So the logical memory refers to how the data appears to be stored from the perspective of the software. And as we look at it, this can be different from the physical reality because the OS is doing is up to some shenanigans to abstract this. It's removing potentially unnecessary detail to try and simplify it or to try and be more efficient so that logical can be different to physical. And the techniques it will use to do this are things like paging and segmentation of virtual memory, which mean what the user sees and what the software sees is perhaps different to the physical reality. And before we go deeper into these two big techniques for today, let me just give you a quick example. So program A will need to be in RAM somewhere. Let's say this program is opening a text file maybe to read from it. Well, from a perspective of that program, it appears like nothing else is in RAM apart from itself and this other file. They appear like they are stored in one chunk. That might not be the physical reality. In reality, potentially the program is split up across three locations, for example, and the file could be split up as well. And also most likely these aren't the only things in RAM. Most likely the OS is having to keep track of other things as well, which are stored elsewhere. So logical doesn't always reflect the actual reality. Now this diagram is kind of a mix of paging and segmentation. Paging and segmentation are two different ways to organize memory. We should really try and think of them as alternatives. So either an OS will use paging 
or it will use segmentation. Most OSs tend to use paging, but actually in reality, unfortunately, they use a bit of a hybrid, although for our purposes, we're going to treat them as alternatives. So what does paging do? How does it work? Well, in paging, primary storage is split up into fixed size divisions, and these individual divisions are called pages. Now, the OS will decide how big these divisions are. Are they two kilobytes? Are they five kilobytes? Are they a megabyte as determined by the OS? But all of these divisions are the same size. And interestingly here, the logical divisions are kept as the same size as the physical divisions, which is different from segmentation. Pages are typically quite small, so often just a few kilobytes, which means typically programs and files have to get split across one or more pages. That's really important to realize. So let's have a look at a visual example of this actually in action. If I want to use paging as an operating system, my first job is to break physical memory down into these subdivisions, each one being exactly the same size, these individual boxes representing a single page. Sometimes these are called frames when it comes to physical memory, but I'm going to call them pages just to be a bit simpler. I need to decide how big these pages are before I begin. Four kilobytes is a page size, which is quite common in operating systems. It can vary a little bit. There are pros and cons for different sizes. They tend to keep it quite small for reasons we'll come back to later. But each one of these pages will be exactly the same size. Now, even this already is an abstraction because in reality, physical memory uses memory cells. Each memory cell is usually a byte. Therefore, each page is here, 4,000 memory cells. But from the OS's perspective, physical memory is split into these pages, ready to go. All of these are empty currently. And I need to have addresses so that we can refer to each one individually. So what happens if I want to load in a program or file into memory? Well, let's focus on the logical side of things first. I've got a program, program A, I want to load into memory so that the CPU is able to start executing it. Well, let's say this program is 12 kilobytes big. How do I use pages to, to hold this? Well, I need here three pages to get used when I hold this program in memory. Each page is the same size. And again, they'll need to have addresses to refer to each one individually. I also may well soon after want to load in a file into memory. Again, this could be a text file. It could be a database file, which program A is using. This could be a bit smaller, could be eight kilobytes. This will need two pages to cover the whole file. I've started with the logical side of things because as we said, the physical reality could well be different, right? There could already be things in memory by the time I want to load program A and file A. One of the key benefits of paging is that it's very easy though to slot in any additional pages because each gap is exactly the same size. Therefore, I can just fill in these gaps using each page without much wasted memory space. And I can split up these different pages, that's okay. File A, I might manage to put together in one go, but program A is split across three different pages in different areas of RAM, which is quite important to make use of memory efficiently because there will be gaps occurring and I want to try and utilize all these different gaps. It does add more complexity for the operating system. So as part of this mapping from logical memory to physical memory, the OS will need to maintain what's called a page table. And a page table is just a lookup table. It just looks up where the logical address is actually physically stored in memory. So we can see that the, what appears to be page zero is actually page two in the physical memory. And then the next part of this program is actually page five, page six. So it allows us to look up where our pages are actually physically stored. So we're viewing paging and segmentation as sort of either or options here. What are the benefits of paging? Well, data can be loaded into any available page. If there are gaps in RAM, I'm able to fill in those gaps if I want to, which means data doesn't need to get stored contiguously. Now, contiguously is a word we use a lot in memory management. Contiguous means adjacent or in a single block or continuous. If data is spread out in different locations, that's not contiguous. If it's in one nice block, that is contiguous. Now, if we had to store data together, this would create really awkward spaces which just couldn't be used, which is inefficient. Now, this inefficiency is called external fragmentation. Now, that isn't an issue for paging. So paging doesn't have external fragmentation, whereas as we'll look at, segmentation does. 
But I want to show you this now just so you have this in your mind as we go through. Let's say this is the situation in memory. This is not currently a paged OS because we've not got equally sized chunks. If I wanted to load in program A, well, paging is fine. Paging is great because I can split program A into three individual pages potentially, and it could fit in to these gaps because it could be split up. However, if I have to store stuff contiguously, I just haven't got space in either one of these gaps for program A. That is called external fragmentation. I've got gaps which can't be filled because I can't split up my data. But paging, I can split up my data, therefore this is not an issue. Now, another kind of unrelated benefit of paging, which is more related to the consistency of the sizes, is that paging is really simple to use with virtual memory. We'll look at this in the next video, but essentially because it's always exactly the same size of each page, it means stuff can be swapped in and out a lot more simply than if they were different sized chunks. However, paging is not perfect, which is why segmentation also exists. Another type of fragmentation can occur with paging. So it is not susceptible to external fragmentation, but it is susceptible to internal fragmentation. But what's the difference? Well, internal fragmentation refers to when a page does not need to get used up in its entirety. In the example I just showed you, I deliberately used multiples of four with program A and file A, but in reality, it's not always gonna be that simple. So let's say this is my setup in memory currently. I'm using a page size of four kilobytes. But this time around, program A is 10 kilobytes. And let's also say file A this time is one kilobyte. Well, not ideal. Program A, the first two pages are fine. I've used up eight kilobytes with my first two pages. But then we've got an awkward two kilobytes to use up. And this is fragmentation. I've got this gap here. Now this gap is really inefficient because I can't store anything else in this gap. A page is our smallest division. I can't put anything else here. So this is now part of RAM, which is just not being used. And that's not efficient. File A is even worse because it's only using a quarter of this page. Therefore, I've got a, a three kilobyte gap, which is just not going to be able to be used until file A gets deleted from RAM. Page 10 at the bottom here isn't an issue because I could just put another file in here. It's perfectly fine to be used. But now I've hit my limit. Now I can't, like my RAM is full despite me actually having some gaps in it. I can't put anything else here because of these examples of internal fragmentation. So this is definitely our main issue of paging. The main benefit is it doesn't have external fragmentation. The main drawback is it does have internal fragmentation. Now that's one of the reasons why the page size is quite small comparative to the size of your RAM, because the smaller the page size is, the smaller the issue is going to be when you have inefficiencies like this. Just to give you another drawback beyond this one here, because we have that page table, there is additional overhead needed to use that table to translate the logical addresses to the physical addresses. So if I am splitting up a program or file across different areas of RAM, I need to look up that correct location, which takes a bit of time. So I'm wasting some time in looking up the different locations. Now, the alternative to paging is segmentation. This is where we split up our RAM into variable sized divisions. They're not all exactly the same size. And shockingly, these are called segments, not pages. So what this means is this time around, the logical divisions are differently sized to the physical divisions. We've not got that consistency across the logical memory and physical memory. One of the interesting things though about segmentation is we are dividing up programs into these segments. And these segments are not just random, they are meaningful. So a segment is a grouping of related data. So how does this all work? Well, I start with a program, program A, I want to put it into memory. Well, my first job is for the OS to decide what data segments this needs to get broken into. And it'll be meaningful. It won't just be a kind of random split. Maybe the main program in the code is held in one data segment. Maybe the subroutine definitions are held in another data segment and maybe the actual data being used and variables and arrays and graphs could well be in its own data segment. So it groups parts of a program in its own data segment. In terms of the logical memory, not a lot is different from paging, except that these segments are different sized. Clearly these are different sizes. So we've not got that consistency like we do in paging. 
But from the perspective of program A, they're still all grouped together. They're still all contiguous. They'll need to have addresses so we can refer to each one individually. Now, as always, physical memory itself is always more complicated because I might already have program B in memory. Maybe program B doesn't have any subroutines, so therefore VOS didn't give it its own subroutine data segment. It's just got the main code and data. Well, that's already in physical memory, so I need to put in program A, which could be contiguous at this point. It could not be. We could split up these segments, but a segment itself can't be split up. So we can't subdivide any further than a segment. We can see that the different segments are different sizes. So even these two data segments are different sizes. They're all a little bit different. They're variable length. I also said that the logical sizes are different to the physical sizes. The physical sizes here are really just for memory cells. So these will have their own addresses, usually quite big numbers because we've got billions of different memory cells in RAM. And the logical addresses are really simple, just 0, 1, 2. In reality, this won't map exactly to physical memory because this will take up a certain number of memory cells. So like with paging, we have to have some translation between the logical memory and the physical memory. This time around, it's called a segment table, which sadly is a little bit more complicated because we need to keep track of not only where our segment starts being stored in memory, but also where it ends and we work out where it ends by storing how big that segment is. So this segment table only refers to program A. So it doesn't tell me anything about program B because we want to keep things isolated in memory. So if I want to access my main program, if the CPU wants to access the start of this program, it needs to look at location 300 in physical memory. Then it will ask RAM to give it the next 20 memory cells. And then to move on to the subroutines, we start at 320 and I want 200 memory cells. And then that's covered that part of memory. So again, we need this mapping to connect the logical memory to the physical memory. Translation is a little bit more complicated. It takes a little bit longer to do. One of the nice things though is I can adjust the size of my segments quite easily. If my program requires more data, maybe the user is adding more data to a list, for example, I can just at will increase the size of my segment or decrease it, assuming I've got space in RAM to do so. So segmentation does offer some flexibility because it's splitting it based on the logic in the program, not based on the physical sizes. So that's what I'm saying. We can grow or shrink these segments dynamically. And the key benefit of this is they're always the exact size they need to be, which means I don't have any internal fragmentation because they can grow and shrink at will. Whereas a page is a fixed size, we don't always use all of it. But this method is very much vulnerable to external fragmentation because we can't split up segments any further. So this could be our current situation in RAM. Potentially, I've got two programs, B and A. Well, programs come and go. You know, we close programs all the time, leaving gaps in memory. So here I've got kind of a gap at the start of memory and a gap at the bottom of memory. The issue of segmentation is I've not got that flexibility to split up my segments. So potentially, if this is my new program, I could maybe squeeze in data at the top. I could put the data at the top. But the main program, unless I can split it somehow, which I can't in segmentation, it just won't fit into either one of these gaps because it's too big. And this means not only can I not open this program, but also it's just inefficient. I've got these gaps which are really unhelpful. These are examples of memory not being used to the fullest because I just cannot fit certain programs or files in these gaps. This is the main disadvantage. Another disadvantage, if you want to give one, is that the overhead of this is a little bit more than paging because it's a little bit more complex translation. 